We're back. We're back in Thailand and we're back on the boat. We've got loads to tell you about. And we're taking four boats out for a race. I mean, who doesn't love an SNS? We're in Cambridge and we've come to the self storage centre. This is where we keep all of our precious gear. So this is it, this is our worldly belongings that are not on the boat. A lot of people wonder what we do about that and this is, this is the answer. We've had a lot of stuff that's been with friends and family over the years but now we've finally got ourselves a lock up. This is it. So these are just some of my records. I was a vinyl junkie, used to do a bit of DJing and all that and um, I think this is less than half my collection. My brother Marcus has the other half. He picked all the best records. That's a particularly good one. We're back. We're back in Thailand and we're back on the boat. It's bloody great to be here. <laughs> it really is, but we are so jet lagged. Um, this is why we're wearing glasses because she looks like a robber's dog and I look like <laughs> my face looks like a bag of spanners. Yeah, we don't look good. We really <laughs> we do don't. not look good. So that's why we're hiding behind the glasses, <laughs> despite the fact it's pretty rubbish weather, but yeah. it, it's just brilliant to be back. Oh, <sighs> Hurrah! We've got so much to catch up on. We've got loads to tell you about, lots of new and exciting projects. The first of which you can probably just see just over my shoulder. I guess a lot of you are waiting for a Dodger update. Uh, that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks because we've got some exciting stuff to talk about today. Uh, what else have we got? We've got a couple of new video projects in the pipeline we've been thinking about. Um, oh, there's a, there was a few things and jet lag they've slipped my mind well i my my idea was to do a japan update yep yeah because we've been we spent such a long time here getting things ready people are saying are you ever going to leave are you ever going to sail again <laughs> and in fact we we are still on track for the whole japan passage that i did la, uh, earlier in the year so we are still on track we had hoped to get ahead of ourselves but that hasn't happened more on that later but kind of on that subject we're obviously we're a sailing channel where the hell's the sailing? Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> well, as you know, we've been a bit delayed, what with one thing or another. Um, so this has been on our minds, the fact that you haven't seen much sailing. And that is what today's episode is all about. Uh, and it's a pretty special one, actually. So uh, John, who you met a few weeks ago when we went out on the Deben Lugger, uh, runs Java Yachting and has opened up a yacht club. And we took four of his boats out for a race in the mangroves. Oh, it was beautiful. It what was. a beautiful day. And his yacht club's actually right here in Crabby Boat Lagoon. Yeah, right. it, it was good fun. Unfortunately, John, right now, as we're recording this, is 
in the UK at the Southampton Boat Show. So we weren't able to catch him to talk about the event. So instead we grabbed Mark, who's a local resident here in the marina. And Mark and I have a kind of, it's not a drunken chat because we weren't drunk, but it's no. the kind of conversation you'd have down the bar where we, we discuss the four very different boats that we took out that day. Yeah. And so Mark and I really kind of have a chat about the four boats and try and address the question, would it make a good liverboard boat? So we thought we'd kind of make this a bit more interesting for you guys. So we've got some brilliant footage and we've got a nice little chat where we discuss each boat in turn. So those are just your opinions, you and Mark, and other people may disagree with what you say, and it'll be great to hear what you think about it in the comments below. So don't forget to do that. Yep, okay, well, before we chat to Mark, there is one other person we must introduce you to and also thank, who, if it wasn't for him, uh, the cinematography wouldn't have been possible. No, it was so, great. Yeah. It was really good, wasn't it? We went out with Christian. Yeah. He's one of our patrons, happens to be here at Krabby Boat Lagoon. Today at Krabby Boat Lagoon Marina is the sort of unofficial opening of the Yacht Club very exciting. John, who lives here and has a number of boats, you can see behind me, is starting a little yacht club here. He has dinghies and all kinds of boats that people can rent and play around with. It's great fun. And today, the inaugural day, happens to coincide with a team building exercise with a company from Thailand that's coming here. There's 30 of them and we're taking four boats out for a race out here in the mangroves. And Luckily for Jamie and me, our friend Christian, who's one of our patrons, has volunteered to take us out to watch the race. So tell us a little bit about your boat. It's very different to ours, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> it's a 24 foot Japanese powerboat. It's a Nissan Sun Cruise 24 with a Volvo Penta inboard engine. And it's a little boat for overnight trips, protected from the weather, from the sun have a cabin can close or it's actually perfect for around here isn't it great for weekend trips and yes, things it should, yeah it should be. so christian lives in bangkok and he comes here as often as he can to sort his boat out don't you yes and get it ready for the season this where he's planning to take it to malaysia i believe yes this is my weekend hobby so whenever i need to get out of bangkok i'll come here and play with the boat it's a lot faster than esper so we're expecting great things today great to have you on board thank you Okay, so I am here with Mark, who is based in Krabby Boat Lagoon. And Mark knows John very well. He's worked with John on a number of projects, uh, helping skipper some of his boats, uh, but more often than not, fixing his outboards. <laughs> yeah. Something he's very good at. And I thought uh, Mark would be a very good person to talk to, to discuss the four boats that we are going to see in this race. And uh, I think you're familiar with most of them, aren't you? Yes particularly the Bavaria 46, which uh, uh, John uses to take out for his IYT training. Would, would you say it's a fairly easy boat to sail? Oh, she's like a big dinghy. Yeah. Um, she's got a spade rudder, a fin keel, and she'll do nine knots without even thinking about it. Yeah, no, I've, I've raced alongside her and she's left us standing. Yeah. She's a fast, I guess, a light displacement. Mm. One that uh, the, the not so generous people might sort of categorised as a plastic fantastic along with your yeah. Benetos and your... Snot, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a she's a very responsive boat isn't she she's it's, you quick. Remember, you remember the dinghies outside and how quickly they go about and, and jibe mm. she's almost the same mm. I remember not terrifying but but worrying people when I took over the helm and said look guys you've got to do it like this you're not fast enough and there's four in the crew and me and I just did it by myself and showed them how to tack fast, save energy, but the speed with which we, we went to, to start, but it just, they went, oh, that's, that's not possible. And <laughs> it really is on, on that one. Isabella's really squeaky, she's really good. So, okay, just for people watching this who may be looking at the, that particular type of Bavaria, uh, what, do you, what would you say it's like as a liverboard, it's potential as a liverboard? For me, as a liverboard, it's a little too roomy and airy. Um, not so much to grab onto, less there's storage. There's nothing to grab onto. Yeah. You walk down below in, in decent seas and you've got to, you've got to push against bulkheads. Yeah, sure. And there are not so many of those to, to push against. Um, 
very few handholds because obviously no areas um, I wouldn't like it so much although it's beautifully laid out I mean, yeah. great galley fridge freezer all that sort of stuff but uh, as a liverboard it doesn't feel so homey it doesn't feel quite as as comfortable as say uh, the Hans Christian does for instance sure. that's a much nicer distinct liverboard you know, yeah. you've got little cubby holes storage is enormous stowage is an issue because we've got all the stuff for the, the training on board. So the, the, the life uh, jackets go in one side, various bits go into others. And then there's not much room for supplies and your personal belongings, which is the majority of the Liverpool's thing. So maybe more of a, maybe a weekend cruiser It's perhaps? a cruiser racer. Yeah. Um, so great to have sitting on a, on a trot somewhere in a, in a marina. Sure. And then go sailing every weekend, as, as that one nearly did. Yeah. Uh, but other people, you know, people will disagree with me saying it's a wonderful but it's it's up to you how what you make of that boat, but not for me, definitely not. Mm. But for sailing, oh, oh, oh wow, <laughs> that's <laughs> another thing entirely. <laughs> okay, so you just mentioned uh, mentioned the Hans Christian, mm, that's yeah. Jade, uh, Jade Princess, Princess yeah. uh, a beautiful looking boat, and that's the one that you sailed in in the race. And yeah. um, when you got those sails out, I have to say she just does look so graceful in the water, doesn't she? I recently reading about them, and they were designed for cruisers but to provide performance cruising. Mm -hmm. And to see a Hans Christian in full sail on the wind, it's a sight to behold, it really mm. is. They're beautiful things. Uh, I was absolutely amazed. She's heavy and she's quite sluggish on the wheel. So I assumed you know, she's not gonna go to windward at all. Popped up the foresail in the main and wow, we are, well, we're at least as good as Isabella. We're mm -hmm. not as fast as Isabella, but at least as good on the point and just as good as Massa Alegre and uh, Ifafa. And a nice solid sail, I suppose. Oh, it was really, it's like it's on rails. Yeah. Now, the issue is going, going about. Um, it's a slow process <laughs> as you go about, and she- A gentleman's she, about. A gentleman's yes. about. It's, it, it was great because the people we had on board were inexperienced and, and not skilled at all. Uh, so for them, it was a nice way to relax and, 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 and learn a little bit in the short time we had. I seem to remember John had said that of all of his boats, that is the one that he would go off. If he were to become a full-time liverboard, and we know John, he's never going to do that. No, he has not. too much fun <laughs> playing with his boats in the marina and outside. Uh, but he did say, I think, that Jade Princess would be the, the boat that he would go off and liverboard it's on. It's so calm. You go down below and it's a warm wood feeling. I mean, mm. there's wood everywhere, which is an issue in itself. Yep. If you're no good at fixing wood, probably yep. not for you. But... Uh, They've been made all over the world, as far as I know. Uh, Thailand was a place once, Taiwan, various areas. And the quality of the work varied over a period. They had an awful time in the, I think it was the early 80s, where people were complaining about the osmosis and things. But right. that's been fixed. Um, to me, that was my ideal cruising boat. That's mm. the one I wanted. But in 1995, they were 400 or 300,000 US dollars. And I went, no, that's not <laughs> But storage is fabulous. Uh, separate cabins for children. Separate yep. cabins for the guests and things you want on yep. board. Uh, the galley's lovely. The engine's in the center underneath some stuff. So easy access on all sides. Uh, yeah, wow, what a lovely boat. Cheers. Now, yeah. the big problem, we came up to Wynwood. We did three boards. Beautiful run up. We were doing as well as the other faster boats, essentially. We went round the mark and came back downwind. And she stopped. Oh, really? It was like someone had put the brakes on or thrown the anchor out or something. Um, literally, there was no... We were not making way properly at all. Now, I had the engine on because we were in the river. Um, so I sort of just tickled, tickled that a little bit and we, we started moving again. Um, a spinnaker, perhaps, but not the sort of boat you really want a spinnaker on. Cruising ship would have helped, but I don't think it would have helped much. Now, you mentioned uh, Mass Allegra. Yeah. And... <coughs> I think she is hands down my favorite boat in terms of looks and aesthetics mm -hmm. and from what I understand uh, Jai who you guys know our rigger uh, I think has sailed the, one of the sister boats of Masalego yes, or even maybe so, yeah. that one. he said its performance was incredible yeah. and as we saw in that race the boy that Alex, Alexis was it yes he chose that one uh, wisely wisely I think yeah, well, he's, a, he's a very committed sailor anyway and uh, he said I want that one and John said of course yes he's known him a long time 
and uh, we all went well that's the race over for us. <laughs> <laughs> because there's no way uh, she's just superb uh, he made a couple of errors because of the the, the Nicky Learny crew he had on board but it didn't make make any difference at all Mass Allegri yeah that's John's favourite mm. favourite boat she's just she's just powerful I'm uh, just so beautiful mm. now was it Franz Mast was it design Franz Mast yeah, yes from what, yeah. I, from what I've read anyway yeah so 40 uh, 41 30. Some say 40, 41, it's like my boat. It's a 39 foot six. You know, take a picture. Yeah, what, what's one foot among friends? Eh? Well, quite a lot of money, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Two foot actors, I seem to remember. Now, I haven't been on board yet. I really should go on board. From what I can see as a liverboard, to me, that's a, a gentleman's, a, perhaps a solo sailor gentleman's boat. Um, there doesn't seem to be much light on the boat. There's none. I've done a little bit of work on his engine for him and you need lights, a head torch or mm. external lights to, to light your, your, your way, literally. Um, she's been around the world with the chap that owned her first, uh, or before. Um, they did a lot of miles, he individually did a lot of miles, and said it's a wonderful boat for cruising. Um, if he'd have had a partner, then perhaps yes. it would have been different. She's a racing boat to me. Sure. Uh, in the fashion of the old IOR class which is now banned obviously big fat beams so quite good stowage on the uh, on port and starboard sides very very fine bow yep. so the the uh, the not front area the bow area there's not so good because it, it curves in sure. very very fast so your stowage is not perfect just both jess and john say they love it a bit and she she sails well she she handles beautifully uh I'd been down below and went, ooh, I wouldn't want to stay too long on this one. Mm. Uh, that, that was my impression of it anyway. Too dark. Yeah. Um, not much light. You could fix that, obviously, with some, uh, some, some clear ports and stuff. But mm. uh, she's not designed for that. No, absolutely not. And then, okay, on to our last one. And it's kind of, we think, vaguely associated with Mass Allegra because they look so similar. And that is Simon's s &S, And it was a Foman. And uh, I remember Liz and I, when we were looking for our boat, hmm. we came across a Bowman 46. It was yeah. a Yule, funny enough, built in 76. Beautiful. Yeah. They're, you know, they're great boats. Another the problem for watch. us was lack of uh, space down below. It had an aft cabin, and the only way to get to it was through a little passageway. Uh, <clears throat> very similar to a 40 foot SNS that we saw mm. and I think this is one of the issues if you're gonna have a gripe with an SNS is similar to Mass Allegra it's that great big fat bum but it just binds into that that tiny little stern yeah essentially. yeah um, your boat my boat big fat stern stowage That's yes for a yeah. liverboard it's about stowage yeah and convenient easily accessible stowage. Yeah. Um, again if Arthur she's a racing boat to my mind uh, Simon lives on her and enjoys it and takes people out for, for runs and stuff, sees how it goes. But um, even he admits it gets a bit tight. Yes, well, so, he is well, very tall. That he's, very about, he's, 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 very he's about 6'4". <laughs> but, uh, I mean, who doesn't love an SNS? She is, an, again, she's a beautiful boat and a real performer as well. well that, that shape, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the guys, the Sparkman and Stevens, they drew the lines and they're almost perfect. Yeah. You look and you go, oh, I know what that is. And you, you probably don't, but... It's, well, it's close, it's so close. Mm. Um, Mass Allegre, to me, I thought was an SNS. But so did I, not, yeah. yeah. But if Arthur, good upwind, really lovely. Mm. And, but downwind, didn't seem to perform at all. Now, I did overtake her while using a small amount of revolutions. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone was a bit perturbed about that. Yeah, he was very it? annoyed. He said, Mark, you cheated. And I said, it wasn't a race. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> One boat sailing, two boats racing. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was... Uh, what do we call that thing? Team building exercise. Yes, that's, that's exactly what it was. And I was building my team. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for that. As you can see, we've almost disappeared. It's starting to cloud over. It's getting Cloudy. really, it's really dark. But thank you very much for that. No problem. And I hope that it gives you guys a little taster of different kind of boats that are out there. We have to go. We're about to get blown away.
So it really couldn't have been a better day for all that fantastic drone footage. Just beautiful weather and clarity and the clouds were great and all that. So hope you enjoyed it and must say a particular thank you to Noel. Yeah, thanks Noel. Yeah. Uh, Noel was the race coordinator and he was the guy that laid out the track for that race, put down the marker boys and generally just kept an eye on the boats. And you'll notice the Eagle Eyed Among You will notice, and Mark did mention it, that I think all the boats had their engines running, but uh, yeah. I think only Mark actually put his in gear, but they kept the engines running just to just to be safe, because although it was a race, we, we wanted to make sure the guys on the, the team building exercise were safe. And obviously it's quite a, although it looks wide from the drone shots it's actually quite a narrow river if you think you know it, it's sil really, it silts yeah. up the sides there's not it? much room for maneuver yeah. yeah just a little idea that occurred to me a lot of you are asking about the music that we use in our channel now previously we'd, we'd spent ages scouring the internet trying to find copyright free music and it was very troublesome so i think as some of you know we now use a music library and this is where some of our patreon money goes to to access a library of copyright free music there's about 30,000 tunes in there and as you know we love our music so I thought it would be quite fun to just post up our, some of our favorite tracks in their entirety yeah there's so some really good tracks there really are used. some brilliant some, there's some brilliant music yeah. and you probably won't have heard half of it because it's used in the background and we edit cut them up and sometimes you only hear 30 seconds of a track yeah so I think I'm going to call this project Follow the Boat Playlist okay. and we're going to start a new playlist f just for our music. Okay, well watch um, this space. Yeah. Because you've got loads of time to do all this, all yeah, these extra projects. So <laughs> can't promise it's coming out next week, but it is something we've been talking about for a while. Yeah. Once again, big thank you to Christian. As you saw, Christian is a Patreon. Uh, we met him here. He came over and introduced himself to us, or us to him, and uh, he said, Hi guys, I'm Christian. I've been watching your channel and you inspired me to buy my boat, yeah. which was really sweet. And Lovely he said, man. I've been thinking of becoming a, a Patreon to thank you. And uh, next day he said, I've signed up. Yeah. So if any of you guys do find our videos interesting, entertaining and informative, obviously we put a lot of time and effort into our videos. So if you're one of those people out there that does like what we put out and would just like to thank us for just two dollars a month half the price of a cup of coffee because coffee is so expensive these <laughs> days uh, we would really appreciate it so check out followtheboat.com forward slash and thanks. do you remember to like comment share and subscribe and when you subscribe hit the bell so that you get notifications of our new episodes peace and fair winds so on, on the racing we've got Massalegre won the first race, um, Isabella was second, Jay Princess third and Fafa was fourth. And it's the lowest score that finally wins mm -hmm. on this. On the team building we put Massalegre number four. You guys had it really too easy. I mean, <laughs> I reckon you all sailed before so um, on team building I've, you're number four. Fafa was number one on team building because they had a very difficult boat to sail uh, with a with a with a four stay and every time they tacked they had to grab the sail and wrestle it round the four stay so as a team building although i thought Fafa actually had more to do and they did it 